Alright, welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. So today, we are looking back on Smite. And as you can see here, this is a old, this is an image I just took of my old video. And as you can see, um, this is when I was going over the, ta like, the strongest unkillable tanks. This is very outdated, though, now. So I figured I'd come back in and update my video on that. Uh, because as you can see down here, these items are not even, they're still in the game, but you cannot actually put them together. Like the Lono's mask, as you can see here, and the sigil of the old guard. These two items you cannot pair up together anymore. Um, because the Lono's mask got reworked and a lot of other things have changed. So this build is no longer, uh, possible. I mean, it is, I mean, you had, you just had to switch. I still draw the old guard out with something else, but, uh, and that's what I'm going to go over today. So, yeah, so welcome back. We are back in Smite, and, yeah, like I said, they, they changed the, the starter items. Um, I've actually been playing again for a while. I just haven't recorded it until now. Uh, and I figured the first thing I should do is update my build. Because, well, like I said, it's, uh, it's a lot different now. You can't pair these two items anymore, Lona's Mask. And, and like I said, it's because uh, you can only have one starter and the Lona's Mask got reworked. Um, so, yeah, they're both starter items. So you, can't, you can't pair them up together anymore. But... I would definitely always choose a Lono's Mask over the Sigil of the Old Guard if you're going to be building an Assassin tank. But, I'm not going to go into that today. Um, so, well, I will be, but not just yet. Because um, I want to explain something first. So, I said that these tanks were un pretty much like unkillable, right? Uh, the Assassin tanks. However, which dearly noted that I did test how long. Now, this is only against like a phoenix, you know, like the the towers, the phoenixes and everything else. I tested which lasted longer between a guardian and a assassin with the Lona's mask. I tested which one actually lasts longer. Uh and I did it with the strongest um the strongest guardian that I know with the highest armor passively since I had to find something to make up for because Alona's mask is really good as you probably know with the mitigation and everything you get you know so much mitigation from it um so I try to find the best guardian for this and the best guardian was Fafnir because he can have up to 350 physical and magical armor um and I decided the assassin would be Nemesis. Uh, I tested it with and without the shield. And the thing, the funny thing is, without the shield, it still lasted longer than Fafnir did. And that's with Fafnir using his abilities to self-heal himself. Um, so even when Fafnir's healing himself, the Lono's Mask is actually still tankier than a full guardian basically if you have a full tank assassin with the lona's mask they are actually stronger than a guardian uh for tanking uh now it, you might be asking is it more useful though to my answer to th the answer to that is i don't think so um they never have been the the assassins like uh the assassin tank that I usually love to troll with. Um, yeah, they're not... They're not better than the support... Like the Guardians. They're not better than the Guardians, alright? Um, for supporting. Because they they don't have nearly as much... For... Like, there's a lot of reasons to it. So, the one being... Lono's... Since Lono's Mask is now a starter item... It makes it... I would almost say unviable at this point in time um because with it being a starter now it takes way too long to actually get tanky 
Um, because you can't get it until, like, I think it's, uh, level 15. You can't get it to level 15, and that's, like, a long time. Like, that's about 20, well, depending on how good you do, but as a support, you usually get leveled up the latest. Uh, but only level 15, that would still be roughly, like, 14 to 20-ish minutes. Um, and even then, you wouldn't have a full build, and assassins really only ever get really good. Um, like, a full tank assassin really only ever gets good when they have Delona's Mask and full set of armor, because not only does Delona's Mask have, start as a starter item, it's also... You have to have a certain amount of armor now just to be able to make all the stacks count, because it has stacks now. Um, so you have to have a, a quite a bit of armor just to be able to utilize Alona's Mask fully. So you have to basically have, to have a full build to make an assassin tank work. So, my final answer. Is it viable? It can be used in casuals. Ranked? I don't recommend it. I really don't. Uh, and even for casuals, it's not even really that viable for trolling because it is just... It takes you so long to come online. It takes too long to get online. Uh, you basically have... You're not tanky as a as an assassin until like 30 minutes. And even if you were... Uh, it just... I mean, most of the assassins, of course, don't really have near as much as much CC as a Guardian. And not to mention, on top of all this, the Guardians, everyone had an HP and an armor buff. Um, I think the... I, I could be wrong, but I think the Guardians got more HP than everyone else. I think they got a bit more than everyone else, more value out of it. Um, so, I definitely think that the Assassin... Now, it's not to say that the Assassin tanks aren't... Because I, I did test it, like I said... Uh, they are tankier in a sense. If you could get, an, if you could actually pull it off, if you could actually pull it off, yeah, they are tankier with a full build and a Lono's mask. But um, it's not by much either, though. Um, because I think I, I could be wrong, but between Fafnir and Nemesis, it was like a six-second difference or so. How much more they could tank from the Phoenix? And like I said, it's really not that great. Um, because there's not really that many assassins that I would recommend you to actually play as a full-blown tank. Um, because Fenrir, I don't think, is that great anymore for it. Only because, since everyone's so much tankier now, it's really hard to make Fenrir that viable, uh, as he was. Because before, you could have Emperor's Armor, ult someone, pull him under a tower, and then just watch their health get blown away. But now it's not it's not as easy. I mean, you can still do that, but they're more than likely not going to die from it unless you full commit to it. Um. So yeah, like I said, you could still make it work. I don't recommend it though. So this video, now that we got that out of the way, we're only going to be looking at guardians this video, and I'll show you the builds that I recommend for them. Like I uh this. Just note that I am not, I, I just got into ranked games, so I'm not the, I'm not like a professional or anything, um, I'm more of a casual player, generally speaking, uh, and bronze only because I wasn't able to get to ranked until now, um, but I do have a, a lot of knowledge when it comes to tanking. Because my entire time, I'm always just a tank. So, as you can see, yeah, 64% Guardian. And this is, like, my third account. <laughs> so, yeah, I have quite a bit of time on Smite. And I mostly spent most... Mostly spent most of it, yeah. Mostly spent my time on just Guardians. So, let's let that be known. Uh, we're going to get right into it now. So... So for, I'm going to go for the top five Guardians. I'm not going to even touch the Assassin. Like I said, I gave my reasons why they're not that great anymore um, for supporting and everything else. 
So, top five guardians. Um, I'll get I'll get right into it. I I am going to say because I know that some of these guardians are like they are they can be good. Like for instance, uh, Yamoja. Um, but that's for people that actually know how to uh, fully um like Yamoja is a character that you need to be very skilled with and knowledgeable with in order for her to be good. So this video is going to be going over the top five easiest and just straightforward kits and the, like which ones are the best for this, basically. That's kind of what I'm going over today. Just the most straightforward kits that you can use and that are good. Like just general good guardians as tanks and stuff. I think for number five, we'll have to go with Sobek. Um, reason being, Sobek is very simple. He's very easy, he's just very easy to play as. Um, all his abilities are really good. They're, like I said, they're, they're really just straightforward. Um, his passive makes it to where he's pretty tanky, even early game, because you just gotta hit a god a few times and you get a decent amount of protections based on your level. Um, like you get more based off your level. And it's really, like I said, it's really easy to stack that because you get one of your abilities off, two stacks right away. You're getting two stacks right away, and you just gotta hit them like once, which is easy to do. So stacking it, no problem at all, and it lasts for six seconds, which you can easily refresh by hitting them again and again. Really easy. Um, he's annoying as hell to fight against. The build that I recommend for you to build on Sobek, well, actually, I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, he's also really tanky in his ult. He uh, doubles, not doubles, uh, God, how we wish, doubles his protection, that'd be insane. Has 600 armor, holy shit. But no, uh, he increases his protection by 15%, which it rounds him up to like, I think 374 it was for me. I had like max protections, I got 374. This is the build I go for. I go for this build for a multitude of reasons. Now, Pestilence and Bulwark, uh, those two... Just depends. Uh, I'd probably go Pestilence just because you get more armor out of it. And you do get anti-heal for anyone that does heal. There's always going to be at least one healer. It is what it is. There's always going to be at least one person building lifesteal or has a healing ability. Or has meditational cloak or etc. There's always some form of healing being done. Um, so I think Pestilence is better. It's because this, this build doesn't have... It won't grant you max magical armor. Unless you use your uh, passive ability to your fullest advantage. Um, but, yeah. So that's why I go for Pestilence over Bul Bulwark of Hope. But this is still an option if the enemy team has a lot of crowd control. I typically don't go for it only because Sobek's abilities, when he's in them, they are not really interruptible. Um, because you're just knocking everyone around. You're, you know, you're... With your A ability, at least I play in controller, so your A ability um, knocks the enemy around, or I guess it would be your two if you're on keyboard, knocks them around. Your I, I I've never been stunned in that form. I don't think it's interruptible. I'm not sure though, but I mean you are knocking them up, so it is what it is. Your three or B. Uh, on controller would be your healing ability, which is quite nice, and then your ult, which yeah, I already told you about that. But yeah, like Sobek is really good. He's really good all around, and th the build, uh, this build generally is just good for him. Uh, I typically go Emperor's Armor for any support, but I don't do it for Sobek. Only you can, you easily could. Uh, I'd probably get rid of um. Uh, either one of these items really don't matter. Just, uh, yeah, it really don't matter which one of these items you get rid of. Um, but I go for this build because, uh, Prejuin, I literally don't even get it for the armor. I mean, that's great. That's a good thing about it, the armor. But this build focuses it on high cooldown because Sobek, 
Sobek on 40 cooldown is just annoying as crap to deal with. Not to mention that you get max armor with this build. You are extremely tanky. Um, yeah, this build makes you super strong. Um, like I said, I just have these two just because of cooldown. Um, and this aura is really nice. Uh, reducing basic attack damage from enemies by 15% after your aura has been, you know, shot off. Really good ability. It's really nice. Um, a really good passive, I mean. Uh, that's one reason I go for it. But yeah, the cooldown, this is what makes it so good. Because you're constantly healing. You're constantly knocking people around. You're constantly pulling them back. You're just in the front, just tanking everything, knocking people around, pulling them back, healing up. And then when you need to, ult. And his ult makes him go underground, but he's still able to get hit, which is a good thing, actually. Because unlike Yorma Gunder, what he just flops around like a little fish or whatever, and just leaves everyone there to dry while he's jerking off or whatever, Sobek actually stays in the fight, just gets extra protections, and is a threat if you're in his area. Because he will hit for a decent amount of damage um, if you're not careful of him. Even with a full tank build, he is he can hit pretty hard if he gets a full charge on you. Um, but yeah, uh, Sobek I generally think is one of the best better supports just because he with this build you're just so aggressive. It's hard for people to really deal with Sobek just because you know his pull his like his charge prey is what really stands out to me. Uh, it puts your enemy way out of position. You're throwing them far back not only are they getting thrown back but they're also having to fall down and that's a bad thing because they have no they can't move at all it gives your team time to do damage either with their own stuns they're you know they're doing everything they can to you know go off of your ability that you just did and on top of that, you can literally chase them down with tail whip. You can pull them back and then tail whip them. <laughs> and it is really, really frustrating because you get put out. You could put way out of position. It's free damage for your teammates to put on that target. It's it's just so straightforward. Sobek is just a character that just leaves your enemies in a very vulnerable position and that's why i'd say he's number five number four be athena now i <clears throat> i will say that there is there is actually two people in the number four's position i'd say um but we'll get to that in a minute so number four i'd say is athena uh like i said it's quite it's just quite straightforward. Um, all you literally do, it like she has like the simplest kit ever. You literally two the two is your best ability. It's the only ability that really you need to land. Um, you can miss everything else; it doesn't even matter. As long as you do the two, you're fine. Like literally, the two is so good. It taunts every freaking enemy you hit. Making this ability just completely OP. Um, it gives your guys two seconds to hit them while you're pulling them away. Uh, I, what else do you need? You got a good, you got a good taunt. You have a global ult which will help you rotate. You don't even need to be good with understanding when to rotate or anything. It's straightforward. You already know it's a really good ability. Um, yeah, two and four. It those two abilities, like you can literally just run Athena with those two abilities and miss everything else and probably still win. I'm not even joking. Like these two abilities just make her fantastic. Yeah, she's a really good she has a good dash to escape um or dive in, whichever you prefer or need to do at the time. Shield wall, of course, is just a ramp like a it's a damaging ability. It doesn't do much. Um, like I said, you're just, you're really just twoing and fouring as much as you can. That's all you're really doing. 
Um, and that's all you need to do. And here's here's the build. So, um, so for this one, I kind of went for a more supportive Athena. Uh, you could do what you want, but this is what I did. I did Sentinel's Boon, Gauntlet of Thebes, got Emperor's Armor, Amulet to Stronghold, Sovereignty, and Talisman of Energy. Uh, the main reason I did this one is really just because, to me, Athena, all she does is run people down. You're just running them down. That's it. You run them down, pull them in, wait for your team, get a W. That's it. That's all you do with Athena. So that's why I just went ahead and threw a Talisman of Energy on there. Of course, if they have high healing, go Pestilence. But Talisman of Energy, I just kind of prefer most of the time because people don't people don't try to go for lifesteal, and if they do, I will go Pestilence. But yeah, Talisman of Energy though, uh, if they don't have high healers, because um, I just love being able to run people down. It's quite nice. You get you know you get you give it to all your teammates as well. So it's also quite nice if you need to escape. Um, you also get, I think it's, don't you get increased attack speed as well? Something like that. Yeah. Talisman of Energy is pretty good. Um, but like I said, you can run with, uh, you can run with Pestilence when you need to. But Talisman of Energy is what I do just because all you do, like I said, all you do is run people down. You two, you ult when you need to. That's it. That's her entire kit. That's all you need to focus on. That's why I say she's number four just because she is so simple. She's good and simple. That's it. I, I got nothing else to say. Uh, this build makes you extremely tanky, as you can see. Uh, Gauntlet of Thieves isn't even stacked on here. Same as the Sovereignty and the Amulet. Like, the initial, the initial like, stats here are, like, the 55 Magical Protection, but the Aura. Because the Aura actually still gives you the protect, added protection. So you'll actually be at max protection for both of these, I'm pretty sure with this build um so yeah you're extremely tanky you got almost 4.5k hp and max arm uh now another recommendation i would put uh if you want to uh i don't i don't do it just because i don't really need to but if you want to you could go for four, like more cooldown uh try to go for i'd say maybe replace emperors or yeah you could uh, you could replace emperors with like yeah breastplate of valor get some you can get this one right here breastplate of the vigilance it's always a good item uh you could run with mantle of discord i don't have any issues with that uh mantle of discord is pretty i know a lot of pros love this item uh i see why it's pretty good um I kind of prefer not to go with it only because, well, most of my builds kind of lead up to having maximum armor anyway. Um, I don't really see the point in the silence for the, like, don't get me wrong, the silence on the mantle of Discord, that's, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why people love it so much, and the 10% cooldown, which I love it too, uh, for that, but um, I'm not going to get it just for that. Uh, I try to go for items that, because I typically have no problem getting to high health and everything else. But I will typically go for Mantle Discord if uh, I'm trying to build for more cooldown. But yeah, uh, on Athena, I really don't think you need it, um, just because the two second taunt is pretty good. Like that, you only need to use it a couple times in a fight, and it's extremely good. I mean, and not to mention, you're giving your team just so much support with this build. Like, you're giving them armor, you're giving them speed, you're giving them, uh, you're being the tank for the Emperor's armor. I mean, I feel like you are just really uh, in the enemy's face at all times. Yeah, Re really simple, really, really fun. All you do is W key and two and four when you need to. Really straightforward kit. Uh, the tied person for me is i'd say kepri just because kepri kind of the same dealio for him uh every ability is pretty good you want to land your 
your three as much as possible. Your two, I mean, it's pre I mean, preferably you want to hit everything, but you know, for the the most important ones you need to land are two and three, and four when you must. Uh, <clears throat> the and if you can't land the four, don't play them <laughs> because uh, Kepri is just one of the best care, like one of the best supports simply due to that ability alone being able to revive a teammate at any given point is just fantastic really helps your team really helps really helps not lose as much uh of a lead if you're ahead or whatever like if you're ahead and they kill your about to kill your guy and you just land that four that's a major blow to them <laughs> so yeah uh kepri is really great his two is amazing um, giving all your allies protections while debuffing the enemy. It's it's a really good ability. Always ensure that you can utilize it as to the maximum value possible by hitting allies and enemies if you can. And land your three, of course, when you need to. Um, to catch up to targets, of course. And hug them with your one ability. I feel like Kepri is one of the... I'd say Kepri is one of the safer supports to play. Um, he doesn't really have much of an escape, but he also but he does have like ways to stop enemies from getting to him. Like he has the three, he can dart away with this ability, which isn't gonna save him most of the time uh, if they do dumpster dive your your Kepri. But he does get fortitude, which <clears throat> is quite nice, giving an extra shield. It's not by much, but it does help. It definitely helps. Uh, especially when you have your entire team with you and you give them all that extra shielding. Plus, uh, the build that I have with it as well. Uh, this is the build that I go, I run with with Kepri, um, Sentinel's Embrace, Gauntlet of Thieves, Emperor's Armor, Alan of the Stronghold, Sovereignty, and the Fair Blessed Hoops. I'm pretty sure you get max armor value from this as well. Can't remember. Uh, if it's not, it's pretty gosh darn close. Um, but you're giving your team a a lot of armor. You're giving your team... Because I like giving my team a lot of armor as Kepri especially because... <clears throat> Kepri is all about making every person on your team a, mini, a miniature tank pretty much. Because with that passive that he gets and all of this on top of that, your team's going to be pretty pretty tanky. Like mini tanks basically running around so it's quite nice to do for your team uh that's why i do this build it's uh it just ensures that your team's a lot more safe when they're around you uh, i really like this build just because of that um but, but you know you can build how you want um this is the, this is the reason why i like to build it for that it's just because you are just keep, keeping everyone in a good position uh with armor and health and all that uh but yeah kepri if like i said if you can't manage to four i honestly i really wouldn't play him just because i know for a fact you'll get dumpstered on like people would call you trash and everything so if you can't if you can't utilize the four that well try to practice it first before going into a ranked match um it is pretty hard to I, I will say sometimes it is kind of difficult to understand when your teammate might die uh but you know it's uh a lot of times they'll either your ally will be able to escape because it does give them insane movement speed um but if they kill them during that time as well they come right to you so either way a lot of times your four will save someone so keep that in mind uh okay so number three all right so athena and kepri are pretty much tied I I think number three would have to be Fafnir. Uh, Fafnir is a little bit more complex, I'd say, only because of the dragon form, his ult, because uh, you have to understand his other abilities. Uh, his X is really, well, really, yeah, his X is a stun. His A, actually, I think for the A, it's, uh, in dragon form, his ability has a larger area of effect. Yeah. And can buff multiple allies. It's basically... Okay, yeah, so all his abilities are pretty... 
Oh, no. They're not pretty much the same. They're, they are the same, pretty much. Yeah. So his dragon form, all his abilities are his dragon form are exactly the same as his uh, other form. Never mind. I thought they were different, but no, they're not. So, yeah. So all his abilities are the same. It's just they're buffed a little bit more in his dragon form. They either have more range. Uh, like his two and three, I know, have further range. And his uh, first ability also stuns as the dragon as well. And I think it does give him, yeah, a debuff on the enemy as well. So, why do I say Fafnir? Well, Fafnir, a multitude of reasons. This being one of them. His passive allows him to have more armor than anyone else in the game. Giving him 350 protections. No one else can have that. Um, no other guardian, I should say, can have that much protections. Unless they're ulting. They can't have it passively. Fafnir is also just really good because of his two. Uh, his two buffs his allies' damage and speed, heals him. This ability alone makes Fafnir one of the scariest supports to fight because buffing your teammate, like your ADC, with this type of type of power is ridiculous. You're giving them bonus damage. And it's based off of the target's power. So, and if you did this, if you, heck, you can even do this on a mage. If you do this on a mage, and let's just say the mage, you know, they got red buff, they got some power elixir, like the five hundred gold elixir power, um, and they have a full build, and let's just say they roughly have around a thousand nine hundred or a thousand power. Twenty percent of that. You're giving them an extra 200 power. You are giving them the power to pretty much one-tap someone. Keep that in mind. Late game potential, this thing is just ridiculous. Um, attack speed is also really good for your ADC. Um, this will probably... This should... Either get them really close to 2.5 or... If they're like one of those other carries where they focus more toward power than attack speed it should get them to 2.0 and they should be really in a good position especially since any attack that they throw out will do 20 percent more damage um and like i said it heals you there's this ability is the best thing about fafnir um in this as passive these two are just really good for him making him tankier at the end of the day and just being able to make your teammates do a lot more damage um so what's the build for this guy? Uh, I'm pretty sure the same as Kepri. Yeah, the same as Kepri's. Um, this is what I kind of run with. Uh, it's just really solid. Uh, really, most guardians I feel need Emperor's armor. Um, for well, obvious reasons for just diving towers. Um, you really want to dive towers, especially as Fafnir, since you have a dash. And technically two dashes if you dash in. I mean, I mean, I don't know why you would all under a tower. That's kind of weird, but um, you could. <laughs> but yeah, you get technically two dashes and then two stuns. Utilize it as as you wish. Um, but yeah, I mean Fafnir is really a diver, especially since he has so much more armor than everyone else. Uh, that's why I go for emperors. He can stay under a tower for a long time. He's really tanky. Really freaking tanky. Now, you could be a more selfish Fafnir if you really want to and go set those boom. Uh, I don't just because you're already at max with this build. So I don't really do that. Um, But let's move on to... I, I told you what's, what's, why he's the best for number three. Number two. You already know who it is, right? You sh at least you should. Geb. I don't press. I don't really like playing Geb. Um, mainly because I just I I don't know. I just get bored of him really quickly. But for those who want to get into support role, to get good with him or anything, to get well to get good with support in general, always pick Geb. I think anyone could really agree with this. I mean. 
his kit is extremely straightforward, just like Athena's. But the difference between him and Athena, he's even better. He's way better. He's way he's even safer than Athena. Uh, his X allows like his rollout ability allows him to escape like pretty much any situation. People, if they the only way they're gonna stop you is that they get in front of you. But the thing is, you have two stuns. Um, you have your four, which is a which is a area stun around you. It does a pretty good amount of damage, even with just no damage card. It does a decent amount of damage. You stun him for two seconds. Um, you have a OPS fuck shield. Um, this shield. Dude, I, I cannot tell you how many times I say someone with this gosh darn shield. It is so tanky and so good. Um, it may not sound like much, plus 15 per Gebs level, but it, it's 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 broken. All right, it, just take my word for that. It's broken. Um, <laughs> his shield is really good. It's really good. Um, last for four seconds. His shockwave ability, you know, knocks him up. Which, knockup is pretty much the best crowd control in the game. Knockups are. Um, I think everyone knows that by now. Knockups are the best in the game. And the best thing about them. Critical strike bonus damage taken is decreased by 65%. So to, to an ADC, you are tanky as fuck. You are tanky as... Because I'm going to be doing crit... And Geb just says, well, I don't care. Crit, I, I laugh at that. I, I eat that. I, I eat 65% of that. He don't care. Uh, the build that I run with him, so... Uh, this is the build that I was testing. Um, I wouldn't run this build. It didn't... It's not... It's not really that great. Um, so I'll actually show you what I would run. I was trying to see, like, how much I can get out of the shield... And it stuns with this. Uh, you could try it for yourself. Maybe it'll work out better for you. I didn't like it though, just because this thing makes you so much weaker. And as Geb, I really. At the time, I was thinking it wouldn't affect me that much, just because Geb's is so safe as a support. But I realized by doing this, you also just. Uh, you also just make yourself just so much more vulnerable to damage. It's, it's not that good. So. I'll go with the actual build that I would go for. So, I would go for Sentinel's Embrace. Really. Um, it will take you longer to get to max armor if you go this way instead of the other one. But, as Geb, you're so fucking tanky. You're so tanky already. You don't care. Like, that passive alone just makes him so tanky. And the shield, when you need to... Shield yourself. You're not dying. Alright, you're not dying. You have to mess up real bad. Like, you would have to be... The only way Geb dies is if you're trolling, for one. Or two, you're behind Phoenix, for some reason. Or all your teammates died and you're the only person left and you're getting 1v5. And you might survive that too. I don't know. Because Ge Geb is so hard to kill. He, like, I'm not joking. He is just so hard to kill. It's because of his 1, his 3, and his passive. Just make him so gosh darn tanky. Um, but yeah, Gauntlet of Thebes. I, I think you should notice by now as well. Gauntlet of Thebes is like mandatory. There's no ifs or buts about it. It is mandatory for you to build Gauntlet of Thebes every single game. As a tank... As any type of tank, right? I would put I would put Gauntlet of Thebes if if it's casuals anyway. Um, you couldn't really do it in PvP, but as a solo laner, I would put Gauntlet of Thebes on. Why? Because this is so good. You get 60 armor out of it basically, because the aura actually stacks onto your stats as well. It's not just an aura that you give them, like your allies, 10 more. No, you also gain that 10. So you get 60 physical, 60 magical, 250 health, 
15 health per five seconds. Re what? What's the? What's? Why would you not want it to get that? It is so good. It's a. It's godly. It's the best best tank item in the game. Period. <laughs> Just put it out there. It's the best one in the game. All right. I would say Sentinel's Embrace is a close second, just because it helps your team. Okay. So, you get those two. You get Emperor's Armor, as I always say. Emperor's Armor is also really good, just because I feel like the tanks need it. If you're falling behind, if you need to play defensive, like if your team's getting just butt-pounded, and you need to play defensively, this is a great item for you to pick up, because... The enemy team will get confidence in themselves, and they will always try to dive your guys. Emperor's Armor is going to say, nah. It's going to say, nah. And it's going to speed up the tower damage, and it's going to kill them very quickly. So always go for that. It's a really nice, especially since, as especially as Geb, since you have two crowd control abilities. You're going to be able to keep them under that tower for a while. So... Yeah, just keep that in mind. You got two heavy crowd control attacks as Geb. So, re really good. Um, So, we need a magical defense. Uh, I would either go Faith Blessed Hoops or Heartward Amulet. Um, would I go both? Maybe. Uh, but for now, we'll just go for this. As it gives you it gives you cooldown, it gives you a lot of magical defense. A lot of good stuff. Um, trying to think what else. Um, I would put for Geb, I would go Mantle of Discord because I like to have a little bit more cooldown. Um, just because you can use your two, you can use your three more, and your all can come back faster because that's what you really want to have your abilities to have a, a come back a little bit faster than no normal. And then for your final item, final item really just depends. Um, if you are fighting uh, people that are healing a lot, you want to go Pestilence. Because we're already at max pretty much. Because um, with this and this, that's about 80 armor that's like not being counted towards us for both physical and magical. So, um, yeah. So basically, we have pretty much max. This, this would be like almost 300. This would be like 280, something like that. So since that is 280, we could try to go for more of both. Um, honestly, you could uh, go Prejuin. You could go um, Spear Row wouldn't be bad. You could do that to get even more mitigation as Geb. Um, or... Another renewal wouldn't be bad. Uh, it really, really would just depend. I would say this item just because I really, really love cooldown on Geb. Um, because to me, it's all about the support in that team for Geb. Because you're already just so tanky. No one's gonna want to mess with you. You're hard. You're hard as hell to kill. Period. You're you're just hard as hell to kill. Um, yeah, and then for relics, just go for these two. But, like, yeah. Geb is just so hard to kill. He really is. I mean, he has pretty good health. He's got good armor. And his passive just makes it so hard for you to get killed by an ADC. He, his shield prote yeah, protects him from mages. Or his allies, whichever. And at late game... Yeah, the cooldown's 18 seconds, but you have a 40 cooldown if you go for this build. Um, That's what I would go for. I just like the cooldown on Geb. That's just how it is. Alright, so number one on the list is none other than Mother Fucking Kuzumba. No, I'm kidding. Fucking Kuzumba sucks. <laughs> you thought it was going to be Kuzumba? No, it's not Kuzumba. No. The best, the best guardian is Atlas. I think everyone knows this by now. Reason being, no items at all. He's got 2,000 injured health. That alone makes him really good. 
He's got really good armor, just on base. Uh, but the thing that makes him good is all his abilities are insanely good. He's got high crowd control. He's got good damage. He's got good mitigation. He's got good speed. He's able to... He, he has so many AoEs for a Guardian that he makes the field of battle just so hard for you to focus because he throws down his you know his ball thing his little ring that he's holding right now he throws it down constantly just hitting the ground killing minions killing everything that's in that radius on top of that he's throwing his ult down he's throwing he's picking you up and just throwing you around like a rag doll he's running at you <sighs> He, he's just in your face at all times. Let's just say that. He is in your face at all times. And he's hard as hell as ki to kill. Period. He is, like I said, he's got high crowd control, high AoE, high, hi high defense. This guy is stacked. Alright, this guy is stacked. Uh, he's just so hard to kill. Um, The build that I would run with him as Atlas... I would go, so like I said, for your core, you want Gauntlet Thebes. For your starter, you want Sentinel's Embrace, I'd say. Or, actually, you know, Atlas, you want to be in the fight as long as you can be. So I'd actually go Sentinel's Boon, um, just to get the extra buffer of health. You want to go Emperor's Armor. For Magical, you want to go Blessed Hoops. Or actually, you could hmm. you could go Manticore Spike. Actually, I'd probably go Manticore Spike just because you get the buffer of health and you also get uh, pretty good the, the passive on it's really great when you when you hit an enemy guy with hard crowd control, which everything Atlas does is hard crowd control. Like, I mean, not really, but his A comes back so fast it just. I don't know. It is <laughs> his A comes back fast. It is the thing that he uses to pick you up. It comes back so fast, even without cooldown. I feel like I could use it all the time. Um, yeah, Atlas is great. So Manticore Spike would actually, yeah, it would benefit you the most with that, I'd say. Um, and then Magical Defense depend, like I said. It depends on if they have anti-heal or a lot of healing or not. Um, really, I would probably go um, this item. You get the most magical value out of this, I'd say. Not to mention the MP5 is quite nice. Not that you ever run out of mana, because he's got quite a bit of mana. But, um, well, actually, no, he don't. Never mind, I'll take it someone else. But... Yeah, so I guess that MP5 would be quite nice for you since he does use quite a bit. Um, and then what would be the final item? I guess the final item would be Mano Discord. And then for relics, none other than this is the build that I would go for Atlas. Really well rounded. Actually, now that I think about it, no, don't don't go Sentinel's Boon. Actually, um, reason being, that's better. Uh, the reason being, Sentinel's Boon, I, I didn't realize, you are, you are, go like, if you're going Sentinel's Boon, you are going way over, um, the armor, like, because you want to get the maximum value possible with your armor and health and auras and everything, and you are going way over your limit if you go Sentinel's Boon, because Gauntlet of Thieves alone gives you 60, you are going like 30 plus over if you go Sentinel's Boon. So for this guy, go Sentinel's Embrace. Um, just so then you're only going over like 10. Because at this point you would have 50 for both of these. Because you need you need uh, 22 then 25. Yeah, so that'd be like 47. Yeah, 47 physical armor you're missing. And then 51 for magical. So... And then the Gauntlet Thieves will make it to where you get max armor anyway. And then you can still be supportive of Sentinel's Embrace. Whilst having max armor and 4k HP. 
and that's what I would go for. Uh, it's M Mental Discord. I like. W I only really got that just so you can have that buffer, all the, the passive and the cooldown. It's quite nice. Um, but yeah, that's what I would run with on Atlas. Um, you could get more cooldown if you want to be more oppressive. I really don't think you need it because you're already in their face all the time. You're you're just so hard to kill. Like killing an Atlas is like if they know how to play and then build, you're have fun killing them. That's all I gotta say. Just have fun killing them because you're usually gonna get to fucking kill them. <laughs> he is just so relentless. But yeah, I'd say Atlas is the best guardian in the game. Just because he is just so, like I said, he, he has so much. He just has so much. He has good crowd control, good AoEs. He doesn't have any supportive things like Kepri, where he has a shield, or like Geb, where he, where he you know, gives you a shield with that shield ability. And he doesn't have like healing like Sylvanas, but he doesn't need any of that. He's... He supports by just being oppressive as hell and just tanking for the entire team. And, like, with this build, you can be pretty supportive as well. I mean, you got Amla the Stronghold, you got Colin the Thieves, Sentinel's Embrace, which all lead to you having a quite a bit of armor and three good auras for your team. Uh, now, ultimately, uh, you're not really giving your team that much armor, technically speaking. I still think it helps, though. It does help you help your team out a bit, so you're not just being a full selfish tank. Cause yeah, it it does help a little bit. So that's all I gotta say for this video. Like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see y'all in the next one. All right, bye guys.